I'd like to thank the organizers for um, providing us the opportunity to speak at this meeting. It's a great meeting. Let's see. So in case I make any forward-looking statements, this will cover it. Um, our company highlights, um, we are a regenerative medicine focused company. Our headquarters are in Marietta, Georgia. We are a publicly traded company, um, trading under the ticker MDXG, and we currently have 500 employees. We have two fundamental uh, and disruptive technology platforms. One is a purion process, by which we process at this point in time, human amniotic membrane. Um, the other, which I'll spend the rest of the talk on, the other is Colifix, which I'll be happy to speak to anybody here over the next couple days. Um, it's a collagen fiber platform, structural platform. We are protected by strong IP with over 25 issued and allowed patents. We have an effective and experienced management team. Um, and we are a regenerative medicine, and we focus on regenerative medicine through evidence-based science and clinical studies. So our mission is to deliver innovative technologies that enable healing through um, tissue regeneration and to provide regenerative science-based solutions for physicians to meet the needs of patients. So I'm going to talk today primarily about the science of dehydrated human amnion chorion membrane. We acquire placental tissues through donations from consenting mothers. Um, we take these tissues, process them with a purion process, resulting in a dried membrane with a five-year shelf life. We also um, I, I obviously study these membranes as well, and I'll show you some of the scientific data. Um, I do want to remind you all, if you don't know, that uh, amniotic membrane is an immunoprivileged tissue. It does not create uh, immune reactions, um, so it's an immune-privileged uh, allograft. So we've published three peer-reviewed papers in, the, in 2015 so far, one in the Journal of Surgical Research, collaboration with Dr. Gertner at Stanford Medical School, the proved d hackam that's dehydrated human amnion chorion, recruits stem cells. Another paper on the Journal of Biomedical Materials Research proved that DHACM regulates bioactivity of all stem cell classes, mesenchymal stem cells, adipose-derived stem cells, and importantly, hematopoietic-derived stem cells. And recently, we published a paper in the Advances of Wound Care that proved that DHACM recovers diabetic stem cells. I'm going to go through these papers in a little more detail later. Right now, I want to give you some a little background so that you understand the importance of these three papers when I talk about them. So we purion process human amniotic uh, membranes. The purion process preserves cells. You can see in the micrograph on the right. Um, they are structurally intact and they contain the bioactivity that was present in those cells at the time they were preserved. It contains an intact extracellular matrix with uh, competent collagens, a variety of types, laminin, fibronectin, and proteoglycans, and also preserves the biological activity of growth factors, cytokines, and chemokines. Now, I'm going to focus this talk today on the last one, on the biological activity of growth factors, cytokines, and chemokines. So we have published pr prior um, to the three I talked about earlier that the human amniotic membrane, DHACM, contains 57 preserved growth factors, cytokines, and chemokines. And these can be divided into two classes, well-known classes. Remember, these, the, the actions of these uh, factors are well-known in the literature. Um, they're, they're regulators of wound healing in our two products, EpiFix and AmnioFix. They're also regulators of inflammation. And those can be divided into two subclasses, cytokines, which can affect cells directly, and chemokines, which are known recruiters. So that's just the tip of the iceberg. We've recently um, published in a book, uh, Primer on Amniotic Membrane Regenerative Healing, that, that the membrane contains over 220 preserved growth factors, cytokines and chemokines. This is a unique cocktail of broad-ranging bioactive regulating factors that are inherently present in a healthy amniotic membrane. So I probably don't need to review this, but I, uh, for those of you who don't know, um, Chronic wounds, acute wounds, and injuries go through three phases of healing, inflammation, proliferation, and remodeling. If you don't get through one of these phases, you don't go on to the next two. This is particularly true um, in chronic wounds. So chronic wounds are plagued by the fact that they are um, 
uh, ha are chronically inflamed and the, and the, the uh, wound cannot progress to the next phase, the proliferative phase, unless that um, inflammatory phase is in fact controlled. So as I mentioned, um, DHACM contains chemokines that are known recruiters of cells involved in the inflammatory system. Um, they contain cytokines, and those cytokines can regulate um, those cells involved in the immune system. DHACM also has angiogenic properties. It contains an array of angiogenic growth factors. These are, these are all strong, potent stimulators of angiogenesis, resulting in neovascularization and, ve and vessel development. In this study, um, this again was a collaboration with Dr. Gertner at Stanford, um, we looked at the angiogenic properties in an in vivo ischemic mouse model. Um, and what we are tracking here is the, is the appearance of CD31 cells in the formation of vessels. You can see uh, day three, not much going on with the CD31, but by seven, you start to see appearing CD31 positive cells. Um, by day 14, um, the number has increased, and by day 28, the number of CD31 positive cells is comparable to healthy skin or a normal healing process. So this establishes that period and process allografts do, in fact, in vivo promote uh, angiogenesis. We've also, through a variety of in, vi in vitro studies, looked at the direct effect of DHACM on uh, endothelial cells. We know it directly induces endothelial cell migration, causes endothelial cells to proliferate, and upregulates the biosynthesis of angiogenic factors, thereby amplifying the initial effect of the membrane when it is applied. Um, let me digress a little bit and talk about the challenges of living stem cell therapies. There are two significant and interrelated challenges, as you all know, I think. Um, and this, prim speaking primarily about wounds that are compromised, chronic wounds, uh, myocardial infarction, where the tissue is compromised and is not very friendly to cells, live cells. So little if any engrafted, in those cases, little if any engraftment of applied cells, um, there is, is little if any. There's a low survival of cells that actually do engraft. Now I know many of you in this room, in the room next door, that are, are appearing at this, at this, or, uh, that are at this meeting are working on this problem. And eventually, somebody's going to solve it. I have no doubt about that. But in the meantime, are there therapies, therapeutic approaches that might aid in the recruitment, so to speak, of stem cells in the healing process? Well, the solution might be DHACM, which facilitates engraftment and survival of stem cells. I'm going to show you data to, to uh, back that up. So this is another in vivo model called the parabiosis model, where a normal mouse is conjoined, um, the skin is conjoined to a GFP positive mouse, that's a mouse that, in which the bone marrow, mesenchymal stem cells um, are expressing a green fluorescent protein. You, you join the cells and you put, them, put your treatment, your test articles in the, in the normal mouse and you look to see whether green cells appear in your material, the test article, or any of the other treatments. And you can see on the graph below that, in fact, a large number of bone marrow, mesenchymal stem cells, green fluorescent protein tagged, coming from the other mouse, the green, the green mouse. Um, are recruited to DHACM. In this case, DHACM being Epifix. More so than in the sham, which received no treatment. Um, this is just a surgical procedure. And TEI prime matrix, which is a um, acellular dermal matrix, bovine dermal matrix. So these results establish that purine process allografts recruit circulating mesenchymal stem cells in vivo. So this illustration basically um, or this it illustrates basically what we think is going on. The factors elute from, from the material when it's applied. It, they recruit stem cells um, to the site and then may in fact cause mesenchymal stem cells to do something once they get there. And I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. So I've got a little teaser here, not a teaser, but a challenge. Is there, is there really a need for live cell therapies if you can recruit the patient's own stem cells and modulate what those stem cells do? So this is a the second paper that I mentioned earlier, and this is where we looked in vitro at the direct effect of DHACM on human mesenchymal stem cells, bone marrow mesenchymal stem cells, adipose derived stem cells, and hematopoietic stem cells. Um, the results, I'm not going to show you the results, and if you want a copy of that paper, just let me know. I'll be happy to send one to you. But the results showed that they cause proliferation of all these, all three cell types, causes migration of all three cell types, increases growth factor production, cytokine upregulation and chemokine upregulation. What you're going to find in this paper is that DHACM, in fact, upregulates and downregulates 
both pro and anti-inflammatory factors. It's a, this is a key thing because I don't think, my opinion is that simply reducing inflammation with anti-inflammatory agents, be they uh, biomaterials or anything else, um, is not the way to go. You need to actually regulate what those cells do when they get there. So this paper looked at the uh, adipose-derived stem cells from di di type 1 and type 2 diabetic patients. Um, and again, the results showed um, that it increased, these, these, in fact, if you look at the uh, quantitative data, the, these cells are compromised. They don't proliferate, they don't migrate that well, they don't do a lot with respect to growth factor production. Um, but when you treat them with DHACM in both cell types, you get increases in proliferation, migration, and it upregulates growth factor, cytokine, chemokine, biosynthesis, and it does this through gene regulation. So this, um, well, this is a, a concern because diabetic patients are thought to have compromised stem cells, and therefore one has to direct treatment towards those stem cells in order to get them um, to perform properly. So I want to end up just uh, reviewing some of our uh, uh, randomized clinical trials on, on diabetic foot ulcers, exactly the case that we're talking about where you've got a chronically inflamed wound that will not progress to healing. So we have done um, several clinical trials for uh, diabetic foot ulcers. This is the results of one, uh, one trial where EpiFix was compared with the standard of care. Um, and in this study, we showed that 92% of these the wounds healed in six weeks compared to 8% of the control. That's an, and with an average of 2.5 applications to the graph. So you can see the randomness in the standard of care group. Some of them do actually heal, some of them don't. Some of them are, are incapacitated, so to speak. But when you give, put EpiFix on it, it normalizes them to a healing response. In the same study, um, we've actually taken those patients that did not heal, heal under the standard of care and gave them EpiFix if they so choose to, to uh, have EpiFix applied. And you can see in this case on the bottom right um, is the retro crossover. You can see again the randomness of the healing that's occurring or not occurring in the uh, um, standard of care group. When, those, when that group was treated with uh, EpiFix or DHACM, you can see it normalizes them to a normal healing trajectory. Um, with these patients, we did a long-term follow-up, uh, about to nine to 12 months. We had 18 of 22 eligible patients return for follow-up. Um, one of 18 patients had recurrent DFU during the follow-up period, but 17 of 18 patients remained fully healed at that time point. So in conclusion, um, DHACM regenerative therapy, scientifically proven and clinically effective. Thanks for your attention.